Welcome to Reread. Today we're going through Aaron Alston's final book in the Star Wars series, Mercy Kill. It's also the last uh, X-Wing book in the series, sadly. Uh, this one, the race or put that back together by face by General, I lost his name, um, doesn't matter, Medius, I believe. And uh, it's on the down low, but they're going to have to go after General Thal is the thing. And that's about as much as I know about the story plot. Because uh, a lot of other things happen here, but uh, you have Piggy, of course, who's back. It's kind of based around Piggy's point of view now. All the uh, Race Squadron books are based around a different Wraith. And I didn't notice that the first time reading it through. And now, of course, it's Piggy's turn to have his own story. He comes out of retirement. For some reason, he's kind of bitter about Race Squadron. We don't know why. We find out later in a flashback that during the Vong War, uh, one of his teammates, Runt, died. And that's when he had people stop calling him Piggy. He said, because Piggy died when Runt died. And of course, he has this animosity toward the Vong. And I remember Scott, who is on Race Squadron, who is also a former shamed one, a Yuzum Vong, that Piggy has a big problem with, because, you know, he hates all Vong. And of course, he has to get over that. That's a good story arc, but basically that's about it. Um, they have a bunch of nondescript characters here, some jokes that all fall flat. It's really weird. I mean, uh, one of the, their leader, Bindi, dies, and you don't care, or I didn't care. She just wasn't that well fleshed out. The jokes seemed flat the whole way through. It's really weird that Aaron Alston wrote this. Um, there's a Claudate named Terman. That should be interesting to me, but it wasn't. You know, Scott has some interesting details. But overall, you didn't really care. And it's kind of weird that, I don't know, we, I guess I kind of wish there would have been more chapters building the team and having them get together and get to know each other first, you know, with kind of face kind of putting the crew together instead of just jumping into the adventure. And the adventure was hodgepodge. Like, I, I knew the, the goal was to kill or apprehend General Thal. What they were doing in, e in each scene, I just, I, I, it lost me. It lost me. They they go, go to this adventure. They have to do this and get this information or slice this thing or trick this guard or whatever. And I don't know what the purpose was. <laughs> I got lost in the storyline and they're all making these cracks. The cracks aren't funny. The ongoing gags is you really need a bath. You smell bad. You smell bad. Hey, Piggy, he smells bad. That's not funny. Good news or bad news? Always the bad news, you know? And that's an ongoing gag. It's not funny. They give each other little code names. You're strong boy. I'm smart boy. He's gun boy. Is that supposed to be funny? I don't. It's really we. It's really weird that this is a book that Aaron Austin wrote because he writes so well. And I thought he was getting better with time. Like I said, I really enjoy. I've really enjoyed all of his books, and usually he makes me laugh. And of course, the piggy dance is always fun. You know, the, at the end where Piggy's doing this dance and everything, he's feeling free, he's feeling happy, he's feeling himself. The first time he's felt like himself in years. But it's not good. It's not good overall. It's really kind of wild. And that's not the worst thing ever to read. But at the same time, it's odd because I guess everyone throws a strike out eventually after hitting so many home runs or solid base hits, and especially with X-Wing. X-Wing and uh, Aaron Alston go hand in hand. This should be like second hand to him, right in Race Squadron, getting a good crew together. Like I said, the characters on, on the surface seem interesting. You, you could do something with them, but I feel like nothing was done. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm mind boggled here because I remember knowing that this was not a very good X-Wing book. But me reading again, reading Aaron Olsen going, you know what? The guy still had it. I probably went too hard on this book when I first read it. And no, I don't think I went hard enough. I think I was easy on it because it was Aaron Alston. <laughs> I'm serious. I was I was really confused on I knew what the general purpose was, but what they were doing at each time when they were running from this people or shooting these people or tricking these guards or under disguise a fool so and so. I didn't understand the plot. I was lost a lot of the time. I don't know. Like I said, this is really really odd for me to be talking about Aaron Alston like this. I mean, James Lucino wrote what I believe is a stinker a long time ago. I'm looking on my shelf for it and I can't see it, but uh, it, it was really bad. It was kind of uncharacteristic, cloak of deception. There it is. It took me forever to find it on my shelf there. And it, so it wasn't very good. And I was thinking, wow, is this really James Lucino? I have the same feeling now reading Mercy Kill. 
And it just, again, it's an X-Wing book. It should be excellent. And Aaron Alston would be the person I would, I would green light this immediately, you know, uh, but the story, everything falls flat. I mean, at the end, we find out that the person who hired, brought Wish Squadron together, it was all a big collusion uh, to take out. He was responsible too. He was in uh, league with General Thaw. Face kind of, you know, does a little Scooby-Doo moment where he reveals the, that he's the, the the general of the Galactic Alliance is the real villain and they arrest him and trick him, trick him at the end again. And there's a little reveal there. That's nice. It doesn't save your story, Aaron. Oh, man. Oh, man. So kind of a disappointing. I knew it was disappointing when I read it the first time. Like I said, there's points in there. I mean, they, they make you pretend that Tom Fannin's alive. No, no, he's not. His face making up some names and stuff. But it was just, yeah, just, I don't know, just to kind of bait you to think Tom, because he knows Tom Fannin's a good character. But, you know, and, and by the way, it kind of just ends like, no, I was Tom Fannin, is what face says at the end. I just made him up. Okay. Well, again, I see what the point is. He wanted a fake ro ro race squadron to find out if the general, uh, if Medius was really behind it all. And uh, he did, but Tom Fannin? I don't know. I don't know. Just nothing about this just kind of matched up. It felt like, I, I honestly believe it was someone else writing and they put Aaron Olsen's name on it. I know they didn't do that, but it almost feels that way because it feels so uncharacteristic of him. But anyway, I digress. I'm moving on to the next story, and I'll see you next time.